Hello and welcome to my review of the LG G2 D800 on the official KitKat version from AT&T. This is the D820C, the 20C build right here. I'll show you. There you go. So this obviously dropped on Sunday. Uh, I managed to get a hold of it on Tuesday. So I have been using it uh, full on and uh, doing my review, my test. I did try to do a video on how to do it to keep root. However, the process proved to uh, be not as easy as I had anticipated. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. It is easy to do now that I know how to do it. And now that I figured out to use the AT&T chat and not to call. So real quick, let's go through and say that this is very clearly what you expect to get. This is a stock-based ROM, stable enough for consumer usage, and loaded with AT&T's bloatware and some other apps as well that, for whatever reason, they thought that you needed. I'm going to go down that list right quick of the apps that they've thrown on here for you. Uh, AT&T Code Scanner, AT&T uh, Demi Map, AT&T Locker, AT&T Navigator, uh, AT&T Ready to Go, Beats Music, the browser bar, the Mingo, featured apps, games, Life Squared, Life Square Log Manager, Mobile TV, The Little Princess. I'm not even sure what that is. I imagine it's a game. Um, as soon as I got this on the phone, I went ahead and started disabling all these things. Um, didn't even bother to open them up. Uh, you'll also find in your app drawer AT&T Drive Mode, uh, which I was not impressed with. It's It looks like it needs a lot of work to be suited for this 1080p screen. It looks like it was written for, you know, QHD screen or something. I mean, it's it looks horrible. Um, at least in the setting up. Setting, at least in getting it set up. And I understand the idea behind it, you know, text and drive. But uh, anyways, I, I didn't find it very useful. AT&T Smart Wi-Fi, which I do use and have used my other ROMs before. Uh, device help. Uh, you can uninstall. ISIS Wallet, which... I'll show you. It does not work because this phone has been rooted, so ISIS is not supported. Uh, mobile hotspot requires data plan, my AT&T, other apps you'll find, notepad, notebook, Polaris office, quick remote, quick translator, task manager, tasks, video editor, voice commands, as well as voice mate, and yellow pages. But of course, as you see there, you can always just get rid of what you don't want. Apps that are running that you might be curious about. You have SVI settings. I have searched for this. I am not sure what it does. So if you happen to know, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to know because I have no idea and I haven't stopped it because I'm not sure of what it does exactly. AT&T address book is in here. Um, LG's intelligent agent. Uh, I did some searching on this. It appears that what this is has something to do with the uh, handoff between the cell towers and the Wi-Fi when uh, doing certain things. Uh, I guess sending picture messages, etc. Um, so I did not disable that. I left that alone. And VU Talk, which allows you to share your notes or drawings with whoever else you're on the phone with as long as they have an LG G2 uh, or an LG phone with ViewTalk um, you can draw pictures and uh, they see them in real time and uh, the example that I saw from LG is uh, they were trying to talk about what to make you know a couple on the phone with each other and she drew a cake and drew strawberries on it and he took the strawberries off and drew chocolate so I prefer chocolate okay well Wow, good job, uh, LG. I'm sure that happens all the time, right? But anyways, it's there. I haven't disabled it yet, uh, but I probably... Actually, you know what? I probably won't even bother because after this afternoon, I'm probably going back to 10.0 so I can continue my ROM reviews. There have been a lot of exciting things going on with Paranoid Android, OmniRom, and Nameless that I want to come back and visit and uh, see what's happening there. The doctor's been a little bit behind because his phone, uh, Dr. 87, his phone was out for repair with LG. I'm trying to make this video very quick and to the point, so uh, I am talking fast and I apologize in advance. Um, I'll try and slow down. 
Some new features I've noticed is um, some changes here in the notification center. The settings button is up here. Other than that, really, I didn't notice a whole lot as far as that goes. Um, and the status bar is uh, white. It's different. They've also added some battery saving options, which you'll find over here, or one of the options anyways. In your location mode, you can do battery savings, you can do high accuracy, or uh, use device sensors only. I will tell you that even on battery savings mode, uh, GPS locks fast, and it tracks very well. Um, in fact, I'd have to say it's been a long time since I've been on stock LG that hasn't been customized by somebody, even clean ROM. Uh, but it does appear to be very quick, one of the quickest I've seen as far as locking and tracking you. Also you have cloud printing has been added, so you got cloud printing right there. Other than that, knock on, knock off, it seems that knock on has been changed to be a lot more responsive there. Um, so I've noticed, it doesn't seem to, I'm not having to constantly tap it and tap it and tap to get it turned on. Uh, it doesn't seem as flaky. It seems uh, it seems like this is this is the way it should have been when it was released originally. So the knock-on's working better. Um, battery life-wise, pull that up for you. Yesterday, I intentionally tried to kill the battery. I will tell you, the more I use this, the better the battery life gets on it. So uh, you just got to give us a couple days to let that Dalvik and that cache build up real nicely, able to cache mostly, get those cache process get those processes cached in there real good. Um, this is 15 hours and 28 minutes, not entirely accurate, because um, it's 8.50 here. I unplugged this at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's close, but it takes a little while before it starts collecting the data properly. And something else I've noticed is that the first 10% of the battery drain, I don't believe is entirely accurate as well. It drains the first 10% much slower than does the remaining 90% of the battery. Um, in fact, it keeps on 100 it stayed on a hundred percent for me even after almost half an hour of screen on time. That just doesn't seem um, accurate at all. Uh, you'll see here I got four hours and 46 minutes of screen on time with this test. This was with the last hour and a half of use being uh, continuously on. I was continuously using it. I was reading the forms. I was checking my news. I was uh, doing social media, um, putting together notes for this video review. And uh, for an hour and a half, this phone was pretty much on the whole time. And it still says that with the usage I was doing, it's expected that it would last another two hours and 10 minutes. So, on a rough estimate, with 19% left, I would guess I could get another hour of screen on time there, which would give me an estimated almost six hours of screen on time. That's really good. Um, that's extremely good. And I'm going to start monitoring the first 10% draw a lot closer in some of my next video reviews to see if this is just a, a battery-related thing or if it's a ROM-related thing. I have a feeling it's a ROM-related thing and uh, see what's going on there. Benchmarks, 22,402. It hovers around there. I have noticed the phone manages heat better as well. It doesn't get as hot as fast. At least it didn't while I was playing real racing. Um, it did get warm. You know, it is Snapdragon 800, but it did not get as hot as I remember it getting with Jelly Bean. Of course, those were also custom ROMs as well, and in some cases with custom kernels. Cameras. You have asked about cameras. Let me pause this right quick and get those queued up for you. I'm not quite sure how the focus is going to work on this. I'm using a digital camera at the moment. My previous videos have been uh, done with a uh, Galaxy Note 2 uh, that sold. So, uh, which was my intended purpose. Hopefully, I will have a nice actual video recording camera here soon, and uh, this focus, if it is a problem, uh, will not be a problem in the future. I want to show you. Let me go ahead and tilt this to the side. Color application here is uh, is very true to color. I don't see any over exaggerated tones here. Uh, detail comes in pretty crisp. This. I'll show you with some blue in there. I do this with some contrasting colors here. I wanted to see the soft versus some different red shades of red and then some dynamic colors in there just to kind of see what it does. Um, and then I did, this is in the dark with the flash. Not very good. 
focus didn't keep very well there and this is with the flash off so this is low light this is low light situation here flash turned off and it did really well so uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with the low light uh, performance it looks like it's improved um, the shutter speed is improved you can tell a difference it takes pictures quicker um, there's no there wasn't really a lot of lag there in the first place but it is quick opening apps in general not that the LG G2 ever had any problems when that department with Snapdragon 800 but it does seem to have perceptionally wise gotten better uh, on a curious note though I could not find and I'll come back in here I'll show you again I hope it stays in focus that I could not find looks like I was quoted somewhere I'll go check that out later I could not find where to hide these front touch buttons this was a feature I was looking forward to that are uh, that has been made available in your flex based ROMs and normally it's found right here but it's not here. It's one that I thought was advertised for the KitKat upgrade for the LG T G2, but again, I do not see it there. So I'm not sure what happened with that. Uh, I did see that Phone Dog reported that was one of the features, but uh, I looked for it. I couldn't find it. Uh, if I was looking in the wrong place, again, please feel free to comment so that uh, I can correct myself. But I did not locate it. Free RAM, you know, for KitKat being touted as uh, using lower or having lower RAM requirements, uh, it seems just like it's on par with what you've come to expect from, or what you were getting with Jelly Bean. I mean, I, I've, I have seen it on a fresh boot at uh, 0.9 gigs, but it quickly jumps back down to 800 as everything starts uh, running. And I'm actually going to do a boot for you real quick uh, here in a moment. Abstinence themes, which actually themes weren't initially uh, available anyways with the LG G2 D800 on AT&T, but that was a Team Mobile exclusive feature, um, but it was something that you could find in the custom LG-based ROMs. I do look forward, speaking about RAM one more time, coming back to it, to see what kind of performance we get once the devs get a hold of this and they start cleaning this up, de-bloating it, putting their signature touches on it, optimizing it, um, not just on the kernel side, which there has been... Um, a request from the devs to LG to get access to get a copy of the kernel get access to the kernel coding so they can start doing things like that so there's gonna be a lot of ROMs coming out here soon uh, which is another reason why I'm gonna try and hop off of this go back to 10.0 root and get back on my ROM review train here because uh, there have been a lot of changes and uh, I want to come back and do some of these other ROMs like paranoid Android Omni ROM and uh, Nameless ROM. I'm going to do this some justice and uh, go back to them because they've made a lot of changes since I reviewed them last. DPI. Don't change the DPI. You'll get stuck in a boot loop. Um, I'm sure somebody will figure that out later. Also, uh, there is no Exposed that's working right now. I did install Exposed and it caused an error. I uninstalled it. It didn't even show that it was installed even when it was installed. Um, so Exposed is not working. It's a known issue. Don't go and report it again. Uh, it's already been reported. Uh, I believe from what I've seen, somebody went to the GitHub and compiled their own update and they said it worked fine. Uh, however, because it's unofficial, they're not going to share it. Completely understand and respect that. Um, so we can expect that when 2.5 drops, that'll get fixed. Touchscreen issues. Uh, let me just say that uh, when typing text messages, my biggest complaint with the LG G2 uh, was that it seems like it got ghost touches and it was really noticeable in text messaging. Turn the screen off, turn it back on, it fixed it. I have not observed that at all with KitKat, so I'm not sure if they've done something with the software or the the um, the touch screen here. If they've they've changed some drivers or something in there or the sensitivity to it, uh, if they've readjusted it, but it seems that it is uh, more responsive and doesn't seem to have that problem. Status bar height, however, because I can't change the DPI here and I can't change the status bar height, I am constantly hitting the home key while trying to type. That is me personally, and that is annoying. Another reason why I look forward to getting off of this ROM. Um, because speed is just not enough, folks. The speed is probably the biggest claim for this uh, ROM here, and it is just not enough. What can I say else about this ROM? A2DP, it works better than Jelly Bean. There's no hesitation. Metadata is shared immediately. Uh, there have been no issues comparing with anything from a headphone set to wireless speakers to 
uh, my four touch text messaging worked over my four touch uh, it's it's great I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this for you while I talk about the forms so we turn this off and restart it let me just say that for some reason and I'm not sure why it does take a while for this uh, to shut down it takes longer than jelly bean stock jelly bean Let's go talk about the forms. Let me get my timer here. Well, well you can just watch the counter on the video. Uh, on the forms you'll find in the LG G2 general section, there are quite a few, and in the Q&A section, quite a few forms going about this uh, kick, official KitKat update. Uh, a lot of good things happening there, a lot of people sharing uh, what they're experiencing. I did test auto-rotate. Auto-rotate works just fine. I can disable it. I can re-enable it. Uh, when it boots up here, I'll go ahead and show you that too before I conclude the video. So, and this error message you're seeing here, this is a result of me playing with exposed before I realized that exposed did not work. To note, it doesn't affect anything. I haven't had any crashes. I haven't had any problems. So, uh, even though that message pops up, it doesn't affect anything. Um, you will find if you want to keep root, which I did, as I've explained before already, um, you can do that. Use the LG Flash tool. Um, go back to 10.0. Once you get 10.0, don't touch it. Leave it alone. Uh, I'm sorry. Once you get back to 10.0, root it using IO root 22. Then don't touch it. Leave it alone. Uh, go to AT&T.com. Get on the chat because if you talk to these folks, it's useless. Um, but if you get on the chat, it seems like, I guess, I don't know if they just experience a higher volume of people wanting to update their phones or what, but they know exactly what the deal is. At least the person I talked to did. I had 10Q pushed to me in no time, followed by 10C. I want to say 15 minutes was all it took, and I was updated. Done. Uh, maybe 10 minutes, but it does take a little while for kick -kick download. You, you do have to be on Wi-Fi, by the way. Let me clear these emails out here, and then let me go ahead and do this auto-rotation for you right quick. We'll go into something that has auto rotation. Let me pull the picture here. All right. So auto rotation is off. You see it's not auto rotating. I'm gonna try auto rotate back on. Works just fine. No problems at all. So uh, real quick recap. 10C, you can flash it directly if you don't want to keep root. Um, but anytime you're on TNC, whether you kept root or not, there is no custom recovery options at this point. So I could even back this up if I wanted to, um, to come back to it. So I would have to flash 10C. As it stands right now, flash 10C with the LG flash tool if I want to come back to it. Or go back to 10O, get back online with AT&T and try and find some way to explain to them how I lost 10C in the first place. Um, to get back up to 10C from 10O. Um, and to note that there is no way to root 10C directly. So the only way to keep your root, again, one more time, 10O. Go back to 10O, don't, uh, then use IO root 22, root it, don't touch it, get your updates through AT&T chat, and you are done. Test it out, play with it, see if you, see, see if you like it. Uh, really, it's stable, it's, it's definitely a daily driver because it's been released and it's been uh, solid, I haven't had any problems with it, but again, the nagging fact that Exposed doesn't work, and because Exposed doesn't work, G2 settings doesn't work, so you can't do a whole lot with the interface right now. That's it.